Hey everyone, it's Hayes, and it's Miraculous Monday, so it's time for another screaming session. Hayes, me. And in today's screaming session, we will be taking a look at derision. Now, as most of you know, I was on the fence about making a screaming session about this episode in the first place, because screaming sessions are like a half squealing session about the love square and how cute it is, and half like a roasting the episode, basically. And I just personally didn't feel comfortable roasting an episode like this, or at least I don't feel comfortable roasting everything that happens, which is what I usually do. So for that reason, there will be parts of this episode that I'm just gonna skip. Like, I have anxiety, I do not feel okay roasting anyone, marinettes or otherwise, for it. So if you're like, hey, why didn't you talk about this part or that part? It's just because I didn't think it was okay to make jokes about it, <laughs> basically. So, um, yeah. So alrighty then, let's get to this absolute car crash on the road and we start with Adrianette. Oh my god, the opening was adorable with Adrian ringing Marinette. <laughs> this boy is the reason I am single. Like, I've never had a crush on Adrian. I was 21 when I started watching the show, so nope, never but I can still realise that he is the standard for what I am looking for in a man and I will not be accepting anything less. Girl, facts. But then Marinette the weirdo goes to get breakfast and while I love milk, Marinette, would you like some cereal with all of that milk? Like, even I, a proud milk lover, <laughs> even I do have a better cereal to milk ratio than that. I just hope she's already eaten most of the cereal already <laughs> before we got the shot. So Marinette arrives at the pool and Adrian is waiting for her like a sim waiting for its next command and he's so sweet taking care of her. A look at Marinette's face, she's just staring at his hand like she can't believe it. I love it. Although I cannot believe the woman behind the counter is actually doing her job. I didn't think people who worked on front desks actually did their job. I thought they like played solitaire all day. <laughs> Anyways, so Adrian gets changed at lightning fast speed, which can only lead me to the conclusion that he was so excited for his date with Marinette that he was wearing his swimming trunks underneath his jeans already. I think that's definitely something he'd do. And he asks if Marinette is okay and she says <laughs> Marinette, girly pop. You don't bloody have any shoelaces, dear god, her eyesight's going again. So they all eventually go out to the pool, and while I absolutely despise Kim in this episode, as I think we all do, I do have to give him credit where credit is due for being the only person wearing a swim cap correctly. Like, your hair isn't actually supposed to be sticking out. I swear to god, these kids are going to give me an aneurysm one day. And then Marinette starts running at the pool, like, stop, you're not supposed to run at the pool, like, first rule of the pool, don't run! No, 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 no! So then the flashback starts and dear god it's so long did monarch daddy just stand there and watch her and wonder what was going on like do you think he heard what she was thinking this man is already confused okay we don't need to make it worse all right so a year younger marinette had apparently worse fashion sense than she does now because i hate to break it to you darling but your shoes don't go with your jeans sorry but i had to say something as the fandom's designated fashion police chief is that what you're wearing i well thought so I'm sure we can wait five minutes while you go and change. After Marinette finds the cockroaches, at least that's what I think they are, I don't know. Where did Chloe and Sabrina even get them from? I don't know either. But anyway, Mr. Damocles finds her and he is the worst principal ever. Cat Noir totally should have cataclysmed him in jubilation. But oh my god, Rose, your hair, yes, amazing. And oh my god, Max, yes, we have been robbed of this hair in the rest of the show? Why? How dare you? But also, like, why is Sabrina's outfit also better in the flashback compared to the rest of the show? What is that about? Like, no, I don't get it. So Chloe arrives after to bully Marinette in the courtyard, but the new queen on the scene, Soculine, that was difficult to say. <laughs> she was awesome. Not only did she rescue Marinette, but she was also 100% right about Kim. I think I'm going to need a Soculine in my life. Like, why would you want to date someone whose hair is shaped like a slide? Sadly, Chloe finds out Marinette likes Kim and tries to get Kim in on her plan, and Chloe says, <laughs> Oh yeah, that's totally how I would describe you, Chloe. But I love this little head movement that <laughs> she does. So Marina is on her way to her date and she's like, this is fine, I have zero plan and I won't die. And I'm like, girly, I could never. Okay, I'm with Soculine on this. I'm also autistic and I'm also a Virgo. I have to plan everything, all right? You know when you go on a holiday with me because I plan everything. Okay, spontaneous? 
That word is... No, no one has ever used that word to describe me. I am the least spontaneous person on this planet. I am not spontaneous at all. If you say so. Anyway. So, Chloe, the utter psychopath, films Mariner almost drowning. Like, what is wrong with you, Chloe? Dear God, but Succulene comes to save the day. Thank you, Sock Girl. But then Marinette says... Yes, I do Adrian, I am so sorry. No wonder why she hated you in Origins. So Sokulene gets thrown out of school with two weeks left to go. I really don't know why you'd bother with that long left, but okay. But dear God, why is Sokulene's backpack half her size? Like, she does gymnastics, right? I think that's right. Like, if she's flexible enough, we could probably fold her up and put her inside it. It's so big. <laughs> so the flashback is finally over. Thank God, it feels like it takes forever. I sincerely hope Gabriel Babes enjoyed finding out about all of that. So back at the pool, Adrian and Undyne have just been glaring at Kim for a solid 10 minutes now, and Kim says... <laughs> like, if I was Undyne, I would not have hesitated. I would have broken up with him on the spot, like, nope, forget it, we'd be over, and oh my god, angry Adrian, yes, yes, and more, yes. Yeah! But not here for Angry Kim, who angry swims, <laughs> angry swims away. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not a good enough swimmer to angrily swim away. Although to be fair, like like I said, not a good swimmer. I'm usually busy, you know, trying not to drown. <laughs> so Marinette finally emerges and finds out Kim has been akumatized fun times, and the lifeguard says, Aí, não pode voar na "Like why not? He's not affecting the water. What on earth happened in the past at this pool?" that this specifically had to become a rule? What, 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 you know, what happened? I don't know. So best boy Adri Baby gets his girly pop to safety. He's wonderful, but oh my God, like he is gonna kill someone before the season ends. The way he goes for Kim, like Ladybug, don't tell him to calm down. This is amazing. I just want to see him really lose it. Ladybug gets hit by Kim's power and detransforms and then transforms back with like a second in between, like Tiki, where was your lightning fast macaron munching in strike back when we really needed it? Like, <laughs> come on. So Ladybug and Cat Noir win because this is for children. And Kim quite rightly apologises to Marinette for what he did. But not to Undyne for what he said about Chloe. Like, what? What? No. <laughs> what? Like, apologise to her. If I hadn't dumped him before, I definitely would have at this point. Oh my god. So outside the pool, we have some very sweet Adrianette to round the episode of Heartbreak Off, and the music's so beautiful, and I firstly love how Adrian is completely there for her, reassuring her, but I also love that Marinette is, you know, as hard as it is for me to see, because I love my girl. And while she knows she has Adrian to help her, she has to do some work on herself too. But then we have the ending, and oh boy, Adrian decides to finally cut Chloe off and it was totally the right decision to make. He really is the best boy. Although everyone should have told Adrian this in Maledictator and he should have cut her off then. <laughs> so let's take a look at the fan art this week and we've got quite a few pieces this week besties. So the first four pieces, yeah, like I said a lot of fan art this week are from Snakely Artist and three of them is they took it upon themselves to redesign Ladybug at Cat Noir's and Rena Rouge's outfits. And oh my god, Ladybug's first. I love it. The hair, yes, I love the style, how it's so big with the fringe and the pigtails. She looks beautiful. Cat Noir, oh my god, yes, the hair. Again, the hair. You're amazing at hair. Teach me your ways because hair, like I'm slowly teaching myself how to draw, but I'll be honest with you. Hair is one of my weakest things. I'd say hair fingers slash hands and feet slash toes. Like, how? <laughs> and then we have Rena Rouge and oh my god, the hats, the jackets, everything. I love it. Then the other piece they also sent me was a little drawing of Felix with Argos and oh my god, so cute. As you all know, I'm not overly fond of Felix, but I can get behind this. This, yeah, Felix in the style adorable. So anyway, we also have some more fan art. So we have one of Gaby Baby when he was, I want to say Gaby Grizzard, but I think it's Gabby. I don't know. I can't remember. I think he says it in Psychomedian. Harry Clown, doesn't he? But I've forgotten if he said Gaby or Gabby. What does he say? Gaby? I want to say it's Gaby because it rhymes with baby. But anyway, <laughs> that's not what it's about. So it's a redraw of like um, Punk Gabriel when he was younger. This is from Anna and he looks absolutely spectacular. I want like a, a flashback of him at this age, not just some pictures, I want a full on scene, okay? They gave Marinette a 10 minute flashback. That was far too long to relive 
what happened in the past in derision okay i want one for gaby please i love him <laughs> then we also have some fan art from i'm so sorry if i say your name wrong pratyusha of felix and kagami and i don't ship them but oh my god bestie you did a fabulous job because they look totally adorable together and then the final two pieces are from nathars so the first piece is ladybug using the ladybug and the tiger miraculous and then cat noir with the cat miraculous and the fox miraculous and oh my god slaying as always marinette with that red lip yes the red highlights in her hair yes again her eyes yes adrian looks great with the orange yes i love it yes <laughs> and then the other piece i have is so it's alia using the fox and the turtle and nino also using the fox and the turtle and oh my god yes couple goals they are amazing matching color schemes we stand i need more dj wi-fi content in the show so thank you very much for sending me your fan art besties so and there's not going to be a poll tomorrow for the screaming session just because i'm assuming you would like intuition next that's what I'm assuming. So I'm going to go ahead and do intuition. And after that, we're going to go back to what you did vote for, which was destruction. But if I've got the dates correct in my head, I think confrontation will come out. So we might have to postpone <laughs> the destruction screening session. But anyway, besties, I'd love to know what your favourite moment from this episode was, and I'll see you in the next one.